You're listening to a Count Out Podcast. Nobody can see it, but I'm doing the dark sheep thing right now. <laughs> hey, everybody. This is Amanda. And I'm Ashley. And we're dark chic entrancing today. Pew, 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 pew. You, oh, yeah. I forgot she does that, too. Um, so, yeah, this is how to talk to your friend about wrestling. Um, I just, I don't know. I needed to dark chic entrance today, sometimes, I guess. Sometimes, listen, sometimes you just got a dark chic, okay? That's sometimes. All. I love that we turned dark cheek into a fucking action word. Yeah. Well, she is. Uh, she, she she's everything. Is. Yeah. Agreed. Okay, so we're gonna have another short banger, but you're getting an episode, so I don't want to hear no shit about it. And we're gonna talk about one of Ashley's favorite subjects. I am shocked Ashley is sitting. I was gonna say in front of me, but technically you're on Zoom, so kind of in front of you. Kind of different, whatever. You're sitting, we're zooming, and we're gonna talk about. I'm just shocked you're not dead. Um, I hey, left you all on a cliffhanger last episode. <laughs> the Did man, you the man showed up. Did you have an inhaler available for when his entrance began? Listen, I was not okay, and then he I came, know you weren't, and then he came out. <laughs> Here's how I know you weren't okay. I saw your Twitter feed uh, and I was like, this bit went wild. All caps. Uh, all caps. He just looked so good and so rested and f- caked up on a Wednesday. I'm telling you. Bro. <laughs> okay. I have two comments about Kenny Omega's appearance. Thanks. Fuck. He fixed his fucking hair and beard. And weird, like, thank fuck, thank you, Kenny Omega, for, for, I don't know what darkness you were going through with the blue and that fucking handlebar nonsense. Like, you were going through a dark period, and I understand that's when girls cut bangs. Yeah. So, I understand and I see your struggle, homie, but I'm very happy that we're back to this weird, like, blonde highlight curl thing that we do. Beautiful. It, it's better. And, um... Obviously, we learned the word corn fed while we were gone because uh, I think Jesus. I think that is all squats. You can bounce a fucking quarter off of that ass. <laughs> I like, love that like the initial shock wore off of him coming back. And then the Twitter feed was just like, okay. <laughs> can you make it? Kenny Omega is not a thing for me. Not a thing. I don't want any part of it. But god damn. I sent <laughs> I sent a gif to one of my friends was and it was that guy who was in court who was like, she's thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> I love that gif so much, but <laughs> literally. Oh my god. Oh. So thick. It's good. It's wonderful. <laughs> and you're right. Like he does look rested. He he started to look tired. And understandably so, the motherfucker held three belts there for a second. Like he was on a run. <laughs> he was tired. Um I did not okay. I want to say I didn't think he was gonna come back yet. I really didn't. I thought it was gonna be some like we now know that Johnny Gargano went back to WWE, but I thought like, yeah. oh, maybe Gargano, maybe like someone so random or new or whatever. Sure, sure. One of our indie fellows. And then that beautiful bastard came back and I was so happy. <laughs> I've waited. It's been 277 days since we last saw him. And now he's back on BTE and everything's There's right now. countdown? Yeah, someone someone on Twitter had a countdown, and then um, Justin Roberts says it in the in the thing. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I will say I'm pretty excited to see Kenny Omega back. 
Because that motherfucker can wrestle. That motherfucker can wrestle. You know, when I say I am sick, <laughs> that means I'm very happy about what is yes. happening. Yes. I know that. Oh, also, I didn't expect him to come back in a trio. Okay. Like, yeah. I thought he was going to roll out solo again and just fucking beat the fuck out of everyone. But I kind of dig this little bit of like a soft entrance that we're going through. Mm. This is a soft reopening for Kenny Omega. (laughs) I think that like the trios is something that has always been teased in AEW like since the beginning. And if Kenny didn't have the main belt, I figured, okay, they'll get the trios belt. Mm. That's not to say I don't want best friends to win, but I'm a I sometimes have to be a cuff a cup half empty type of gal and realize sure. that the boys are not gonna win. <sighs> and that next week is it next week or the week after it'll be Kenny and the Bucks versus probably Will Osprey and Aussie Open, but um. Yeah, in the meantime, I'm just having I'm just having fun. We'll take what we can get. I want to say that I mean Kenny Omega is a fucking incredible wrestler. Um I'm glad he came back and I think people were still expecting him to be at 100. And yeah, he's, and he's not. But I think he's that not. humbles him slightly too. I think for sure it humbles him slightly and like I don't even know how to explain it like it I I don't know he's still not even okay so he wasn't even full fucking battery and he still went so hard in the paint I thought so fucking hard this man like why are you jumping off why are you almost dying in a fucking barricade oh yes you just came back like holy shit so also, um, I didn't watch the actual match because I'm a shitty human being and don't watch wrestling on TV. You're not uh, a shitty human being. I'm sure there are fans out there that are like, you're not a real fan because you don't watch it when it's on TV. Whatever. Anyways, so I watched the BTE yeah. version, which is that fucking little twat waffle with the glass. I can never remember his name. With the Brandon. fucking... Thank you. With the spray and the goggles. With why do you need goggles? I'll never understand. But he had like a GoPro strapped to his head or something. Yeah. Um. So I watched that version of the fight, and mm-hmm. I am going to formally request that AEW get a cameraman a GoPro for his head because that view was pretty fantastic. My favorite thing is like you get to hear everybody, so you get to hear when Kenny is like, "Oops." <laughs> yeah (laughs) it's like my favorite stuff or Or like when when the bucks are like yelling at everyone my favorite was the fucking bucks like one of them jumps off a rope and he's all lucha like oh my god (laughs) so ridiculous just so ridiculous well and then like them commenting on each other's moves was super cute like one of the bucks was like first move back and he does that like that was cool yeah they're sweet boys the like they did some sick ass moves that three man flip shit was very cool yeah does a sick ass like the man is on his shoulders and then they flip forward and he leaves them on the ground i don't know what it's called but i really love that move a lot (laughs) yeah no that's that's very good i was glad (laughs) that he he still was bringing back like a lot of his same moves um snapdragon fucking v trigger and he did i mean he did get his his one winged angel too. I was just gonna say, what's the angel one called? And then because I'm obsessed with the misfits right now, I was gonna be like the descending angel. That's not what it is. That's not what it is. That's wrong. <laughs> That's wrong, Amanda. But good try. Um, we yeah. still need to play that game. Which the guess is? whose signature move this is? Oh God, I fail hopelessly. <laughs> I mean, it could be fun. I think so too. Um, oh, I will chime in and say that I played games. I played Jackbox on Twitch with Ryan and Mikey and Ryan's fiance, Jesse. 
and a lot of audience participation, which was fun. But um, Ryan says he has an entrance song that he'd like to throw in. Oh, we haven't done an entrance song in a minute. So just for him, I will throw this in because I deep. It's deeply upsetting. Oh fuck! Let's hear it. All right, Ryan, what are you bringing to the table? It's a Fergie song. Oh no! And it is "London Bridge." Fuck off, Ryan. Who's coming out to that? Who's he is? He is. He's he's that. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. That's what you want to make your fucking entrance? I got the spoken word version of the lyrics read to me. Is this Twitch stream available to watch now? I should see. Because we're going to have to share that so we can hear Ryan's spoken word version. Oh, you know what? It might have been before the Twitch stream. Oh, okay. Damn it. Sorry. I'm gonna have to listen to the song to give it a full a full fucking go before I just completely knock it down. I just really didn't see you know, I say I really didn't see that coming out of Ryan, but I feel like of all of our count out podcast fellas, absolutely that Ryan. is yeah, absolutely it's Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. One hundred his fiance, so lovely. Oh, she's the sweetest. Just I really really laugh so hard. Her in like peripherally yeah on zoom but she makes cute comments she amazing amazing uh uh, jackbox player she's everything i'm obsessed well we're gonna have to jackbox more um anyway side note uh yeah my boy is back um okay i don't want to i don't want to discredit uh who they were up against Okay, who were they up against? Because the only one I recognized was Andrade. So it was, it's Andrade. Um, okay. Give me two seconds. Dragon Lee, who's the luchador. Okay. And fuck, what's that last guy's name? R- Roosh? Roosh. Okay. Even though it's spelled Rush, but it's Roosh, apparently. Um, mm. Dragon Lee and Roosh are brothers? Okay. And they have a name, but I don't know it because it sounds like Ingo, 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 Ingo. Oh my God, Ashley, Jesus Christ. What does it sound like? <laughs> In. <laughs> I can't do it. If you know the, if you know the team in Japan, that's what it sounds like. Ingo, 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 <laughs> Oh fuck. They made a hard one. Yeah. Interesting. But I but I don't know if this is like them because the one in Japan's like that word um <laughs> day, day Japan or something so it's different but okay it's same same but different yeah got it okay so anyway um they were great <laughs> they were absolutely wonderful dragon lee almost killed the child cuz he threw himself and kenny into the fucking over the barricade and i was like um people uh, live there stop that also don't kenny you just came back please don't kill him he just came back yeah um i haven't seen anyone in the crowd that has uh taken my breath away in a moment but Mm -hmm. i was gifted with a real good one this time oh yeah (laughs) there was a man with a cardboard box on his head, but it had been shaped like a square, and it was perfect. Was he wearing a suit? Yes, he was. That's Kip Sabian. Fuck off. Nope. This step yeah. manages. Yeah, everyone, <laughs> Amanda just said she loves Kip Sabian. So let's no, let's no, put no, that no, one no. Up. no, no, no. I like cardboard box head oh. Sabian, not actual, not the actual person. No. Well, Absolutely Kip Sabian. Not. He's been doing that for a while. I don't know why. I just I don't think him. anyone knows why. Like, what are you doing? What is the he's, point of this? He's always in the crowd. He always got that box on his head. Is that um, like an intuition thing? Who knows? Uh, this, if you can seek out this match, please do. It's it's also heavily featured in the B, in the BTE. Um, of course it is. It's Kenny coming back. Uh. I listened to Kenny's speech after. 
Ashley just died again. Um, All the crowd little kitties. <laughs> I really liked his, I, like, I, I just really liked his whole, like, this isn't us. I don't even remember exactly how he said it, but something about, like, it's not about all of the belts or the matches or anything like we're here to change wrestling or something like that and yeah I don't know I really enjoyed it I thought it was rad like Kenny's like fucking baby. it was cool to hear somebody talk about wrestling and not have it be about belts and fucking their win loss record and all this shit like it was drama just rad. It, yeah it was just like hey we're here if you're here you're seeing a guaranteed Kenny Omega and the Bucks match like that's yeah what it is like you're not getting anything different you're not getting us trying to be anything different we yeah. are ourselves and we're gonna fucking do it and holy shit I thought that was so rad like what a fucking comeback speech dude yeah we didn't crush it I'm I'm worried I am still worried about him oh like I mean he looked hot as hell whatever but his like compression garment with like another compression garment underneath oh i was just like (laughs) don't come back if you're not ready but he clearly is ready he knows his body better than anybody like he pushed it to the limit so he knows where the limit is yeah i just hope he continued like i hope he doesn't go full force like he was where it was like every fucking episode kenny omega was wrestling yeah yeah let's let's ease it back in and i think doing the trios is the perfect thing because it, so it's too. bracketed like mm-hmm. you know he gets a break yeah um, he's got other two people he can rely on that he can do moves with so it's not yeah. all just on him like i think it's smart to go this route i agree i fully and agree. him with the bucks is always fun personally it is because like oh my god I know I talked about this at like the very beginning of our podcast, but for anybody who's new and hasn't gone back, um, early 2020 is when I really got into like BTE and I, uh, when I was off, like when the pandemic hit or whatever, I went back and watched like every single episode of BTE and it, it got me through a lot, which is very silly because it's like, you know, cheesy as hell, but seeing them together and seeing how fucking far they've come because the good amount of the beginning of bte was the bucks going to japan like yeah that's how long ago it was and they weren't even in japan for all that long it was just like travel days here and there they'd meet up with kenny sometimes they wouldn't because you know they're on different shows or whatever but whenever they were all together it was just like so perfect and so i just feel like it, it gets emotional a little bit just because it's like fuck you guys like it's been so long and he he finally took a fucking break and i'm so glad he's back but i don't want him to rush into anything well here's hoping he listens to his body and we can fucking have him around for a while i'm worried about my baby <laughs> i'm just kidding of course um it was a good match i was stoked i was stoked on everybody like it was a good match i was really glad that we decided to fucking watch it so at the end when the show ended uh we saw kenny walk out and then he started to walk back towards the ring because andrade pulled off dragon lee's mask and so we don't know what's gonna happen with that because he pulled off his fucking luchador mask. So I think they're trying to make Dragon Lee like more of a baby face since these mm-hmm. two are like fucking heel central. So yeah. to make Dragon Lee like a little bit of a sweet boy, I think it's good. I don't know. He he's I haven't seen much of him, but um man, don't please don't throw yourself into a barricade. Like fuck. Or a child. Like let's not kill kids. Let, let's not kill kids. Um yeah, and the other, not to like go back to Kenny, but <laughs> the other thing is, is like he's so good at selling fucking moves that if something did happen, I feel like you wouldn't know because it's like, is he is he hurt? Is he playing it up? Is he not? Uh, <laughs> so. Wrestling, Ugh. 
Kenny Omega fucks with my kayfabe so hard. Yes. Yeah. Like more more than most wrestlers do. Like everyone's like, is that real? Or is that a, is that a fucking work? But with Kenny, I'm just like, I know nothing. I like Shelly does that to me sometimes too. Oh, Where I I'm like, see. Shelly, listen. He was there was one match he recently. Um, he was selling his fucking foot. Like, oh shit, I broke my ankle. And I was just like, you motherfucker. And no, he's right. gonna You're gonna be there in September or I'll kill you. Yeah. <laughs> All so, right. So Kenny Omega has returned to AW. Ten out of ten, Kenny Omega. I don't have a 10 out of 10 this week. That's okay. Kip Sabian. Uh, <laughs> no. Box said, box said. <laughs> box said Kip Sabian. Um, um, box said. That's just, all right. That's my 10 out of 10. Box said. I just briefly want to mention that Punk and Mox kept fighting this entire episode. It was so funny. And at one point, um, uh, Cesaro had to grab Mox. <laughs> and he like had him and it was like, why can't that be me? <laughs> uh, again, I did see your Twitter feeds. Oh, yeah. That's I was cool. laughing so hard at some of the things. I was like, I need to watch AEW just so I know what Ashley's talking about. Freaking out. Freaking out. Losing it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of crazy wrestling happy- happening right now. Um, I think the G1 just ended, but it's really fun. If, you, if you've never gone back and watched G1 um, post-match interviews, they're my favorite thing in the entire world. Oh yeah, you had mentioned that I was sorry for the yawn out of fucking nowhere. Good lord. So rude. Um, yeah. We could do a G1 match. I think that'd be cool. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Um, what else, guys? Uh, oh, can I also mention that Mox also kissed CM Punk? Yes. He kissed him. Again? And more? No. Or so So Mox kissed Effie. Yes. And so he kissed CM Punk. Oh, okay. And I was like, listen, bud. <laughs> Girl, that's Effie's thing. I need you to knock it off. Yeah. Effie's the uh, right way, and we love it. <laughs> did we already like- talk about this? We probably already talked about that. Sorry. We did, only, and I only know that because I went back and listened to a couple of our banger episodes because I was tired of music. Oh. Listen to us. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to stupid ice sound. Um, we That's I love so that, that our podcast is my fucking comfort podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Oh my god. So um not a very smooth segue, but the Patreon for the Count Network is still a thing, so you should still join. I will do my best to post a link to that in our stories and on Twitter sometime this week. This week not wink or whatever just came out of my mouth but we're gonna throw goodies on there Ashley and I need to pick a new book for the book club we also will cover a ton of shit during October because that's like one of our favorite months yeah my birthday month also (laughs) fucking Halloween the greatest holiday in the world um so we'll be doing god knows what with that shit yeah, I I still like. Please give us your recommendations for really shitty wrestling horror movies. Yeah, I'll take them. I'll compile them. We'll, Send them. We'll pull them out of a hat and we'll see which ones uh uh-huh. get recorded. Um, the other thing is, yeah, if you also have book recommendations, you can give them to us too. If there's anything you want to hear us talk about, unless you know it's v- book club guide to slaying vampires because i can't i can't do it ashley can't do that one but i was thinking it might be cool to read a wrestling book oh i hadn't thought of that until right now i was like why are we not reading why are we not reading wrestling books (laughs) yeah there's a lot i'm not reading a jericho book i refuse i'm not doing it i won't do it i'll read bret hart's that one i can probably get down i think i have mick foley's anyway um i also have i think i have the (gasps) we could do box Oh yeah, because he wrote a book. We can do the Mox book. I'm down. It's all right, people. It's quick. <laughs> oh, I love a quick book. So, okay. So then, 
yeah so it looks like ashley and i are planning things on air because that's this is the how thing. We- yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so big. we have a log so we can go back for references 100 percent. that's what it is yeah. okay so that's it you can find do we even still have to say this shit probably because there's new people that listen yeah we got it okay so you can find us on twitter at HTTW pod or on instagram at how to talk wrestling pod and then there's the big cartel where you can buy merch at how to talk to your friend about wrestling.bigcartel.com. Which honestly, I feel like I want to get rid of it and just make you guys Venmo us and then we'll fucking mail it directly. Mm. Just a Tell thought. us how you like, feel. Do you want to do yeah, that? Yeah, like, again? do we keep the big cartel or do we get rid of it? Um, so let us know what you think about that. But yeah, you can buy merch. Please, please, please subscribe to the Patreon. Um, it helps us grow. It does help us grow. It also helps us um, get new, more merch and things. And we'll throw like all the random shit on there. <laughs> yeah, we want to give you guys a lot more. It's just, you know. Time and, and effort. Yeah. Hey, both got full-time jobs here, so. Yeah, we do. The labor uh, of love. And we decided to make this a weekly podcast instead of bi-weekly or something. God damn it so stupid looking back we should have focus group to that <laughs> we think we were we were very ambitious um so yeah have a good day guys have a good yeah. week enjoy your weekend be safe drink water it's hot be nice yeah be nice to your friends be nice to random people and just have um a good old week yeah have a good week and we'll see you next week with god knows what bye bye This has been a Count Out Podcast. You're right! There's buried treasure here! How did you know? There always be treasure in the independent waters, matey. Why don't more people come here for their hunt for treasure, Captain? It'd be a hard one to find, but if you want to make it easier to find, tune into independent waters on the Count Out Network. Every Wednesday with your hosts, me, Zach Batista. And me, Mikey Manfredi. As we take you through the independent wrestling scene and find the treasure buried beneath the surface. Whether you're new to indie wrestling or have been watching for years, this show is for you. That's Independent Waters every Wednesday on the Countout Network. See you there, landlubbers.